In this lecture, we'll be going over four operating limitations of your small unmanned aerial system under the Part 107 regulations. Number one, it may not be flown faster than a ground speed of 87 knots, which is equivalent to 100 miles per hour. Number two, minimum visibility, as observed from where you are operating the SUAS from, where your transmitter is, may not be less than three statute miles. Number three, if there are clouds, the unmanned aircraft must be at least 500 feet below the clouds and at least 2,000 feet horizontally from the clouds. And just a quick note on that last point because I get this question from students quite a bit. The cloud clearance language here is a bit confusing. What the FAA is saying is that if you're flying directly below clouds or a cloud base, you need to make sure that you're at least 500 feet below the clouds. You can fly directly below clouds, you just need to maintain that distance of 500 feet. If you see clouds but they're not directly above your UAV, then you do not need to maintain the 500 foot part of that rule. But what about the 2,000 feet horizontally? If you're flying at the same altitude as clouds, like if you were in a mountainous environment, you need to distance yourself horizontally from those clouds at least 2,000 feet. The 2,000 feet part of this rule only applies horizontally, meaning if you're operating at the same altitude as the clouds. The fourth operating limitation is the maximum altitude limit. Under Part 107, a remote pilot in command cannot fly an unmanned aircraft higher than 400 feet above ground level, unless it's flown within a 400 foot radius of a structure and does not fly higher than 400 feet above the structure's immediate uppermost limit. So, if there's a 1,200 foot telecommunications tower, you can inspect it with your UAV as long as you're flying within 400 feet of the tower, both horizontally and above its highest point at all times. If flying above a structure means that you're gonna be entering controlled airspace, be aware of that fact and follow air traffic control procedures, which we cover in other lectures. Thanks, we'll see you in the next lecture.